people suggested that we ought to do this again. So here we are. We're doing it again, based on uh, your response and your desire to continue this dialogue. Um, tonight, we welcome to our panel not only Irshad, who you all know well, um, but Tariq Fatah. And it is a pleasure, Tariq, to have you here. <laughs> Tariq, as he describes himself, is a secular Muslim. You can ask more about exactly what that means as this goes on. He was born in Karachi, Pakistan, and then moved as a young man to Bombay. For the past several decades, of course, he has made Toronto his home. Tariq is the author of the much acclaimed book, Chasing a Mirage, The Tragic Illusion of the Islamic State, and more recently, the widely reviewed, controversial, and very well-respected book, The Jew is Not My Enemy, The Myths That Fuel Muslim Anti-Semitism. Tariq will have much to add to our conversation tonight, and I know he is looking forward to being part of this dialogue. We also, of course, welcome back fabulous Irshad. And for the few of you who are not fully familiar with her background, just a, a wee bit about Irshad. Um, Irshad is the renowned Muslim reformer and professor of leadership at New York University. And she is and has been hailed as a signature voice of the Obama generation. Global in outlook, practical in approach, and dedicated to finding common ground in a fractured world. She has transformed her personal journey into a riveting story that guides all of us to confront the challenges we face as students, professionals, parents, and as citizens. Oprah's Magazine has given her its first annual Chutzpah Award for audacity, nerve, boldness, and conviction. And I can assure you, having known Irshad now for probably more than 20 years, she has more than enough of all of those things. Um, and lucky for us. Um, now, through her just launched Moral Courage Project at NYU, Professor Manji is teaching a new generation of global citizens to fight conformity, even at the price of backlash. Her inspiring message, any of us can change the world by daring to ask questions out loud. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome both Irshad and Sharif. Yes, ma'am. You open up for us. When we arrived, multiculturalism meant Arrived from? From Uganda in East Africa. Multiculturalism meant you learn English. Forty years later, something's changed. And what multiculturalism is perceived to mean today is more about self-segregation and retaining and preserving all cultural differences, not just some in the name of, quote, respecting diversity. Right, I was just gonna say, I think multiculturalism at that time meant if you were English, learn French, and if you're French, learn English, and if right. you're foreign, you ought to learn one or other and maybe both. Absolutely. But it was a lot about English and French. It was, for us, right. mostly about English because right. we came to Vancouver. Just amplify a little bit your notion that not all cultures are equal, which I, I'm not okay. uh, passing judgment one way or other. I'm asking you to just help okay. us understand. Cultures evolve out of social conditions over maybe two, 3,000 years. So the culture of the Amazon people is, di is different than the culture of the urban uh, Amsterdam resident, right? It's not that the races are unequal, the cultures are unequal. For That's an important point. Yes, now, Very important race, point. Yeah. what should have been done if Trudeau was an honest man, he would have instituted a multiracial racialism, which meant that things that are beyond my choice, the skin of my color, my height, my sexual orientation, my gender, that should never make a difference in how I'm judged. Okay. However, the things that I am capable of doing, being a bad architect or cheating in my exams to get a certificate to be a technical writer, those are the things that I should be judged without fear. And that comes out of European civilization. I'm sorry but the Ming dynasty or the Gupta dynasty did not create the notion that she and I can sit here and be interviewed by you. This comes out of a discourse of over 400 years of reformation, renaissance, the enlightenment period. I'm sorry, but Socrates was not born in Pakistan. What can I do about it? I can't change it. Aristotle didn't come out of Swaziland. And you know, uh, Gandhi for all that he offered came out of his education in London. I may hate the British, but they gave us the trains. I, I, okay, now, let me, let me just uh, respectfully. Disagree. No, no. 
No, but but Tariq, in, certainly in Allah, Liberty, and Love, you know, I tell the story among other stories of Islam's own Gandhi. Yes. Okay who was born and raised in what we today would call the Northwest Frontier Province of Pakistan, which is, of course, overrun by the Taliban today. This man, Islam's Gandhi, who, and, and there's a reason he's called Islam's Gandhi, he too uh, fought for positive change within Islam, nonviolently, even redefining honor to be about individual dignity, regardless of one's gender, as opposed to collective shame and collective reputation. So. Here's the thing, he never stepped out of where he was born, okay? Yeah. He, he, didn't, he didn't need an education in London to draw the conclusion that we are God's children, all of us, and each of us deserves just a basic set of dignities. Do you have some concern about the state of practice of democracy in this country? Because really, that's what I'm hearing. There's a concern about the state of practice of democracy, that the questioning, that the rigorous learning, both the informed electorate and yeah. people who go into politics with an inherent fundamental education historical perspective is in the downward trend rather than upward trend. Do you have some concern about that? Sure. And as an educator, I have concern about this. Um, one of the big ideas that I think is worth at least thinking about is that, you know, uh, over the last many, many years, the phrase critical thinking has gained a great deal of currency, particularly among the left. And what that has become uh, or degenerated into is the fetishizing of mere criticism. Okay? Particularly, as Tarek has pointed out, against America, against Israel. Um, what has not been pushed further in education today, and by the way, for the digital age economy, it's even that much more urgent, is what the management uh, uh, thinker uh, Edward de Bono has called um, generative thinking. In other words, critical thinking allows you to disassemble the pieces of what you believe is not working. Now it's in tatters. How do you reassemble those pieces into a viable solution? That's generative thinking. And that is not where most of our young people are nudged and encouraged and pushed to go. So we wind up with slogans, hey, hey, ho, ho, fill in the blank has got to go. Okay? I say that freaking slogan has got to go. Honest to okay? God. Because it's become a replacement for actual thinking. Tariq. Irshad, you are brave, you are bold, you are studied, and most of all, you are engaged. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Got it.